Lord God, we're so thankful and so grateful. You are so good to us. You've loved us with so great a love, and we are here to rejoice in your goodness today, to give thanks to you, to worship you. We love you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give thanks to God. Amen. Well, we've had a wonderful week here at Mount Zion. Let's give thanks for Sima, all right? It is good to be in the house of God, and I do welcome you to Mount Zion Church. I'm Craig McLaughlin, the pastor here, and I want to invite you this coming Thursday evening. We are having baptisms. If you have faith in Jesus but haven't been baptized, uh, we're going to be traveling over to the home of Scott and Lorraine Holly. have a beautiful pool, and uh, we're going to have baptisms. We're going to meet out in front here at 645 Thursday night and travel over there, and uh, it's a beautiful uh, just a beautiful thing, and it, it's all about going public with your faith. It's all about if Jesus has grabbed hold of your heart, it's letting the world know, and that's what it's about, and Jesus promises that he will pour out. You'll get drenched with water, but he will drench you with the Holy Spirit. He'll fill you with his spirit. So that's Thursday night. That's in the bulletin. Uh, also, this coming Friday night, we're having a worship night here, and we are just going to sing and sing and sing and sing God's praise and it's just going to be an all-out celebration. So that's Friday night, 7 p.m. right here in the tent. And I want to give thanks for MZ Kids. Uh, this is our children's ministry here. Let's, let's give thanks. I also want to give thanks for Pursue. This is our student ministry, middle high, senior high. So let's give thanks to God. want us to uh, um, pray for, we have a team over at our orphanage, so Children of Zion Village. This church has been doing an orphanage, operating an orphanage in southern Africa, in Namibia, since 2003. We have a team, I think it's about 15 people are over there right now, and been getting back lots of great pictures uh, on Facebook, so uh, we will pray for them. We also have our team now down at Warncliffe, West Virginia, this town that we've been connected with now for quite a few years, I think like 15 years or something like that, and uh, they're leading Vacation Bible School, and I want to thank you all. You all gave over 165 backpacks loaded with school supplies uh, for the kids there, and so we will lift all of them up in prayer. We have, uh, you know, this is all about music and arts, and I'm not going to tell you all about it, but we have a group here, a youth music and arts group called Mosaic. And they meet every Tuesday evening, and it's a fantastic group. There's information in the bulletin about that, or uh, talk to any one of us, call the church office. It's, it's a great ministry. So, somebody say amen, preacher. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask Abby to come on up here, and we're going to pray together. Lord God, we just lift up uh, this morning, and we thank you for all the, the youth and the children and all the leaders who have come together uh, to bring this worship to us. We pray for our team in, at Children of Zion Village, our team in West Virginia. Lord, we just pray for children, for youth everywhere. We lift our hearts up, Lord. We love you. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Abby. So my name is Abby Hunnicky, and I am the MC for SIMA this year. Um, as you guys may have noticed in the past, I am not McKenna, who has been our MC for a while. She is actually in Namibia, Africa, with that team. So that's actually really cool. Um, so a quick background about SIMA for you guys. SIMA is the Children and Youth Ministry Through the Arts Camp. And Mount Zion has been hosting SIMA since 2004, which makes that 18 years of SIMA now. Yeah. So this year we had 63 campers and 40 volunteers, including the Soul Team. So shout out to Soul Team. Woo -hoo! So Soul Team stands for Servant of the Lord, and the Soul Team members consist of the youth members who are 14 to 17 years old, and they are too old to be a Simon camper, but too young to be considered an elective leader or an elective helper, although we did have some Soul Team members teaching some electives this year, which is also really cool. Um, these Soul Team members assist with electives, they help with cleaning up after camp every day, and they help with our small groups and much more, and we could not do Simon without them, so thank you guys. Yes, whole team. Whoop, whoop. So each camper gets to choose three electives for each day. Um, they can range from baking to cooking to woodworking, sign language, art classes, dance classes. 
We have a lot of different opportunities for these campers, and it's really cool. Uh, each camper is in each elective for five hours throughout the week, and they learn their dances, they learn, they make their art pieces, um, and they work hard to prepare everything for today. In addition to their elective classes, each camper is placed into a small group based off of their age and gender. Each day, the small groups learned about something different, and we will have some soul team members come up here a little bit later to tell you guys what they have learned throughout the week. During small group times, the campers have a lesson and based off of the theme of the day, and it ties into our weekly theme, which is worship with all of your heart. And shout out to Maddie Sims. She made this logo for us. Uh, during small group time, the campers also make blankets. And this year, the blankets will be donated to nursing homes, Third Saturday families, and the food distribution families, which is also really cool. This is something that we have done for a while. I don't know, if, have we done this every year, Ms. Amanda? No. So it's not, it's not something that we've done since the beginning of SIMA, but when I was a camper, I really enjoyed doing this, and I know these guys enjoy doing it as well. So it's really cool that we get to donate these to families at the end of the week. Today, campers will be performing some pieces for all of you that they have been working on. And in the youth tent, the other side of the church, we have some display electives and some art pieces for you guys. So feel free to look at those after the service. Thank you all for coming to Sima Sunday this year and supporting the campers, and we hope you enjoy the service. Thank you, guys. that house, but it did not fall because it was built on the foundation of the rock.
This red handkerchief represents the sin in our lives. Our lives are stained with sin. It is only through the blood of Jesus that we can be made righteous before God. The Bible says that though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Lately I've been reeling, watching the nightly news Don't seem to find the rhythm, just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops Feels like it's never gonna Gotta get that fire fire back in my bones
Hi, it's been a fun week at Saima, and we've learned a lot. First, we're going to have the sign language class do our verse of the week, Psalm 86, 12. Can we have a round of applause? <laughs> Monday, we learned about how God is awesome and how we can worship him by telling him how awesome he is and how much we love him. Tuesday, we learned about the different ways we can use our words and how we can use those words to help others and to bring glory to God. Wednesday was all about actions. We learned about how our actions leave an impact. We discussed ways to leave an impact that glorifies God. No matter what job or career we have, we can always be the hands and feet of Jesus. Tuesday, Thursday, we all had attitudes. Avery? We, I think you mean we learned about attitudes. Oh, right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we learned that no matter what you are doing, if you're grumbling and arguing... You're not giving, bringing glory to God. Whatever the situation, you can choose to have a positive attitude to make a good impact on the people around you. Friday, we talked about how it can be difficult to do what God wants rather than what we want. God can do amazing things through us when we submit to his will. Avery, we need to be backstage. <laughs> We've learned with you. We've learned this week with you. Shalom Mish Paka. Hello, family and friends. Boker Tov. Good morning. Lahithra Oath. See you later. Yeshua. Jesus. And hallelujah. God be praised. Psalm 149, 2 through 3 says, Let Israel rejoice in her maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. We rejoice before him.
אלפיים שנים חוזרים הביתה מכל העמים ויבוא עמים רבים לדרוש בציון את פני אלוהים ברוך הבא לארץ ישראל לכל העמים ברוך הבא Who's forever good I read the Bible as I should every time I see the rude I know your love is true thank you for your words so sweet it helps me choose to do good deeds thank you for the food you give that has nutrients that help me live We're not coming for church in other areas of our lives. Let's find out. Hey, nice ball. But uh, I love a good game of football. You're not a pro player by chance, are you? You bet I am. Rushing, pass passing, sex, I do it all. Hey, uh, that jersey's not the Ravens or the Steelers or any team I've ever heard of. Oh, no, I guess you wouldn't know that. So, who do you play for? Well, you see, it's like this. Pittsburgh's such a long way away, and even though Baltimore may be closer, I was raised as a Washington fan, so I really can't stand the Ravens. And I had a fight with my girlfriend's uncle's brother's cousin, who lives in Philly, so the Eagles are out, and... So you don't have a team, do you? Well, no. What kind of football player doesn't have a team? Hey, don't judge me. 
I just think you should be able to play football wherever you are and whenever you feel like it. it I'm not into organized sport. It's really all about me and the football anyway, right? I mean, I don't need all those other people just so I can have a personal relationship with my football. And, you know, I really don't feel like talking about it anymore right now. I gotta go. Mm hmm. Bet he didn't like training. I wonder if they kicked him out. Good idea, Bear. Nice stethoscope. Yeah, that's new. I bet you're a doctor. Got a diagnosis. Yep, symptoms, medications, side effects, I know it all. Sounds like, sounds like it keeps you really busy. Where do you practice? Well, you see, it's like this. Liability insurance has really gone through the roof. And business taxes, they're always asking you for money. Can you believe they want 10%? <laughs> and then you figure in staff wages, and there's a lot of other costs. And I wasn't prepared to risk the house on a business plan that- Are you saying you don't have an office of patients anywhere? Well, no. Well, what kind of doctor doesn't practice medicine? Hey, don't be so narrow-minded. I just think that it's important to know how to help people and, you know, do your best, do unto others, and all that stuff. And, well, if you excuse me, I've got to go read a very important medical journal. I'll see you later. I wonder if you really passed medical school. Well, hi. Looks like you're having fun. Sure I am. Hats and lays. Are you having a party? Yeah, sure I am. I'm the birthday girl. Woohoo! Isn't it great? The best music, the best food, heaps of games. It's wild. It sounds like fun. So, uh, where's everyone else? Well, you see, it's like this. It's really hard to find a time these days that suits everyone. Everybody's just so busy. And writing all those invitations, and besides, we could never all agree on the same type of music to play, and I just couldn't. So, wait, are you saying you didn't invite anyone to your party? Well, no. What kind of party is it with any friends or guests? Hey, don't be so legalistic. I just think it's important that you enjoy life. As long as you are happy, that's all that matters. People create problems, you know. Sometimes they can be such hypocrites. And that just gets me down. Anyway, I've got to go and change the playlist. See ya! Hmm. Makes you wonder if she has any friends at all. Hey, nice Bible. Thanks, the bigger the better, right? You're a Christian, aren't you? Why, yes, of course. I do try to live a good life. So what's the nearest church to here? Um, I'm not really sure. There's a town called, there's a town called Church Mill right down the road. I would guess there would be one there. Oh, so what church do you go to? Well, you see, it's, it's, it's like this. this. Hebrews 10.25 says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. What's your excuse? As I cut this rope, it shows us how sin separates us from life and fellowship with God. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. By accepting Jesus as Lord, we are restored to eternal life and fellowship with God.
And as you wish that others would, and as you wish that others would do to you, and as you wish that others would, and as you wish that others would do to you.
The Bible tells us that our sins separate us from God. A sin, by the way, is anything that displeases God. We let these three pieces of rope each represent a different kind of sin. The small rope represents the sin of lying, not a big lie, just a tiny little thing. The middle rope represents the sin of stealing, taking something that is not yours. And this long rope represents a really bad sin, like murder. Did you know you could murder someone's reputation by simply speaking badly about them? Let me show you how God views sin. In God's eyes, sin is sin, no matter how good or bad a person may be. We are all in need of God's salvation and forgiveness. Do you ever feel like you're being attacked by unseen forces? The Bible tells us that there are dark and evil, uh, that there are people, uh, demons, that are attacking us all the time. But we, if we, and we choose to worship our awesome God with our actions, our attitude, our words, and our will, he will protect us. Here's Demon on Assignment.
My name is Nathaniel, and this week at Sima, I wrote Snowcapped Mountains. It was hard to stay awake right then, right there. The seats weren't great, no features on the plane. Was flying many miles through the air. I took a look right through the window pane. A peak outside revealed a ton of snow. The crystal snow reflected morning light. Another look, and I see quite a show. A mountain and another with great height. The sunrise was spectacular, of course. The snow-capped mountains were the awesome part. They glisten, sparkle, shine, and reinforce the image of the Lord that grabs your heart. A whoosh, and then the mountains fade from view. Alas, but I'll not forget that splendid hue. Thank you. Good morning, family and friends. This week, we've learned about worshiping the Lord with our whole hearts. And it's not about what is seen on the outside, but what the Lord sees on the inside. Psalm 29 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We bring our offering of worship today first and foremost in honor of his name, but also as a prayer and proclamation for our families, our friends, our communities, our nation, and all humanity. When we speak the name of Jesus, we speak salvation. See our hearts, O oh God. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus cause your name is power your name is healing your name is life break it
just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Ooh, you guys are making me cry. Lord God, we pray for each one of these beautiful children. Lord, pour out, pour out your goodness on them all the days of their lives. Hold each one of them close to your heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Let's give thanks to God. Now, y'all didn't think that Pastor Craig could get a microphone in his hand and not preach a sermon, right? But I want to ask you, what do you think is the likelihood that Pastor Craig could preach a sermon in five or ten minutes? Pretty shaky, right? All right, so we're thinking about worship all week. So all summer long, uh, I'm, I'm doing a series of messages on big questions about God. So here's one of the questions that, that I get asked. What is the point of worship? Why should I make all this effort to get myself with a group of people and worshiping God week after week after week after week? What happens, here's what we're going to think about really quickly. What happens when you worship an awesome God? Well, I know what just happened to me. Whew. God reached deep in my heart deep in my heart. You know something I never thought would happen to me as a preacher? I never would have guessed this years ago when I was just getting started, is how I would find out how hard this world is. Whew, this is a hard world. But seeing the goodness of God right here, right now, wow. So what happens when we worship an awesome God? So I got three scriptures. You got these three for me back there? First of all, Second Chronicles. We got that? There it is. That is not what I wanted. All right. Yeah. We got the wrong verse there. All right. Forget the three scriptures on the screen. I'll tell you what they are. So here's the first thing that happens. All right. There was a king, King Jehoshaphat. If you're having a baby, name your baby Jehoshaphat. Here you go. So um, an enemy was coming, a huge enemy. All these armies joined together, and they were coming against the people of God. I don't know what enemies you have coming against you. Most of my enemies are coming against my head and my heart. That enemy of fear, that enemy of anger, that enemy of discouragement, that enemy of resentment, right? I got those kind of enemies that come against me. King Jehoshaphat had this huge enemy coming against him. And what did he do? He got all the people together. He walked right out there to meet that huge enemy coming against him. But you know who he sent out first? Sorry for the worship team up here. He sent out the worship team first. They had no weapons. In fact, none of them took any weapons with them. No swords, no knives. They just sent the worship team out worshiping God. And all the people just walked out as this enemy's coming, worshiping God. And what did God do? God chased all their enemies away. Chased all their enemies away. I found out if I worship God and keep worshiping God and keep worshiping God, if I come into his house week after week after week, he chases my enemies away. He chases my fears away when I keep coming here and singing his praise and singing his praise and singing his praise. He keeps my resentments and my chases my anger and my resentments away when I keep coming in and worshiping him. You know what? God commands us. He tells us to worship. Does he need us to worship him? No. He knows that we need to worship him. If we don't worship him, our enemies destroy us. Fear destroys us. Anger destroys us. Sadness destroys us if we don't keep worshiping God. Number one reason why to keep on worshiping God, because when you do, he chases your enemies away. 
All right, secondly, there was a man named Paul. You know Paul in the Bible. He was that first missionary. He went everywhere telling people about Jesus. And you know what? He got arrested. He got beat up. One thing after another because people didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. So one time he prays for a, a girl who was a slave. He prays for her, and suddenly she's well. You know what? Her owners had her all drugged up hmm. to be a fortune teller. And Paul prays for her, and she's well. And her owners say, these Jews, these Jews, these Jews. And they take him into town, and the police beat him up and arrest him, and they throw him in jail, and they put him in the stocks, which means he's in massive, agonizing pain, him and another guy, Silas, who was with him. And you know what? They started worshiping God. If you keep on worshiping God, even when life is treating you wrong. What did, why is Paul in jail? Why did he get beat up? Because he prayed for someone. He prayed for someone who was in a really hard way. But they beat him up. They throw him in jail. He kept on worshiping Paul, and Silas kept on worshiping God. And what does it say there? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God. The prisoners were listening to them. Look at verse 26. Put verse 26 up there for me. There you go. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds, all their chains were un. Fasten. Here's the second thing that happens. If you keep on worshiping God, he sets you free. Sometimes your enemies get hold of you. Sometimes fear puts you in prison. Sometimes anger, resentments, discouragement, whatever it might be, the trauma of the past puts you in some kind of prison and you can't get out. But if you keep worshiping God, Paul and Silas kept worshiping God. That wasn't the first time they worshiped. It hadn't been two months since they worshiped. They were worshipers. They kept worshiping God. And as they were worshiping God that night, a huge earthquake strikes. All the doors are open. But you know what? The more amazing thing, the jailer comes in, and he's scared to death that all the prisoners just escaped. And in those days, if a jailer lost his prisoners, he was going to be put to death. He draws out his sword. He's going to take his own life. But Paul hears the sword come out of the sheath and crawl, cries out to him, don't hurt yourself, we're all here. That's how I know Paul was set free. Can you imagine the anger that was coming into Paul's heart? He used to be a really angry man because of people like uh, all these people in the Roman Empire who hated his own people, the Jews. Can you imagine how that was coming back and had his heart again? But he cried out, don't hurt you. He saved that man's life. The man who had done so much wrong to him. Jesus set Paul free from anger, from resentment, from all that darkness, right? If you keep worshiping God, he'll chase your enemies away. If you keep worshiping God, he'll set you free. I don't know what might have you in some kind of prison right now, but I know the answer. You know what? I think we make life so complicated. We make life so complicated. God just says it easy. They read it up here on the stage. Don't get, stop getting together with his people to worship him. If we just do the simple things he tells us to do, amazing things happen in our lives. He doesn't need us to worship him. He knows we need to worship him. If I don't want to get stuck forever in some kind of prison, then I need to keep worshiping God. There's one more thing. Let's look here at Psalm chapter 9. So here is King David. He was a worshiper. Look at this. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. Look at verse 2. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Here's this third thing, that if you keep worshiping God, Jesus will grab hold of your heart. David said, I'll worship you with my whole heart. You know, uh, yeah, I can know about Jesus up here in my head. I can read the Bible backwards and forwards, which was an awesome thing to do. But if I don't come into his house and worship him and worship him and worship him and worship him, it's going to stay right here in my head. Right? But if I will worship God, whoo, he just grabbed my heart again sitting down here. He grabbed my heart again. Because you know what? This stuff in your head, it ain't going to keep you close to Jesus. It's not going to keep you close to Jesus. Oh, you need 
You need to know about Jesus. We need, what did they, when they asked Jesus, what's the greatest thing, commandment, greatest thing to do? Worship the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And then he second, there's a second commandment just like it. Worship your neighbor, or love your neighbor as yourself, right? And so, wow, if all it is is up here, you know, if I go off to college and I say, you know what, I worship God as a kid. I, I, got, I know Jesus. I know about him in my head. It'll all go away. If I go live in my life saying, I got this Jesus thing down. I know what the Bible says. I know what those preachers say. It all goes away. But when you worship him and worship him and worship him, he grabs hold of your heart. And when he grabs hold of, you know, if I just loved uh, my wife, Lisa, with my, my brain, if I just knew she'll be here at the next service, if I just knew all these good things about her, if I didn't love her with all my heart, or if I loved her with only a piece of my heart, that marriage wouldn't have lasted all these years, 42 years and running. <laughs> yeah. Wow. God grabs all of our heart. Jesus grabs hold of our hearts so that we can just keep loving him and loving him. And when you keep loving God, you keep loving God, then you're able to bring that love to those all around you. Wow, Pastor Craig did it. Look at that. Less than 10 minutes. He preached the word of God. There we go. So we'll get the worship team up here, and we're going to sing. We're going to sing another song. So let's all stand up here. Lord God, we're so grateful and so thankful to you. And we just get the worship team out here. Come on on out. And we just thank you, Lord God, for, for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are so faithful to chase our enemies away, to turn them away, Lord God. You are so faithful, Lord God, to set us free. Lord, all this junk that grabs hold of our hearts and just holds us in bondage, Lord God, when we come into your house and come into your house and come into your house and worship you and worship you and worship you, you set us free. And Lord, we thank you that you will get our hearts. You'll grab hold of our hearts, Lord God. And we love you, and we thank you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Of our part of our service, I would like to ask all of the alumni, Saima, even though some of you are old and decrepit now, you still have to come up. 18 years of Saima, any alumni out there? We'll get him in the later service. We'll find you in the lobby if you don't come up here.
much. We love you so much. You don't have an idea how much we love all of you all. So incredibly much. We love you. Thank you so much. God bless you.